Am I the idiot for distancing myself from my daughter after she took her mother's side? I, 50M, found out that my wife, 49F, of 20 plus years was having an affair. I was completely hurt over this and have started divorce proceedings. Obviously, this has been hard on our four children but I cannot spend the rest of my life with someone I can't trust. Before we got married my wife's family had money and demanded I sign a prenup. I had no problem but since then the family money has been lost due to bad investments and lawsuits. My wife was a psalm for the majority of our marriage. Our youngest child is 19 and because of the prenup she can't get alimony. In short my wife will be screwed. The only thing we own together was our house and while it is paid off my wife won't be able to afford the upkeep or HOA fees, so she will effectively be homeless. I have no intention of giving her any type of support for any reason. Since serving my wife divorce papers I have refused direct contact as my lawyer has advised, but she's now playing dirty by getting the children involved. We have two boys, 23 and 21, and two girls, 25 and 19, and my wife has been pleading with them to get me to agree to halt the divorce proceedings in favor of counseling. After I told my children that I had no interest wasting any more of my life with that woman they have all essentially backed off except for my oldest, Christy. She's very close to her mother and can't imagine life where were her parents aren't married. Christy tells me that her mother realizes her mistake and will do whatever it takes to make things right. She says that I owed it to the family to work things out. I refused and told her that it wasn't her place to make those kinds of demands. Since then the only time Christy talks to me is when she's sobbing and asking me to not to destroy the family. I understand that this is hard for her and offered to pay for therapy so she can cope, but she said there wouldn't be anything to cope with if I wasn't trying to divorce her mother. Since Christy is being too emotional to act within reason and refused therapy I have been resolved to limit contact until after the divorce. Update for more info. Alright I read a couple of responses and I just wanted to clarify some things. Clearly my she will effectively be homeless comment was misinterpreted so let me set the record straight. Because my wife and I own the house together, so long as we sell the house and split the proceeds she'll get something. My wife didn't a give up her career to raise my children. We could have hired a nanny but she didn't want that and choose to be a psalm for our children. Because of her family money she was getting a monthly allowance from the estate. Plus I paid for a housekeeper to make things easier on her. Once my wife reached 30 she started getting a monthly allowance from the family estate and the prenup addressed that so I couldn't claim half. In exchange she couldn't get alimony. I didn't want my children to get involved in the divorce. My wife decided to do that and even brought up the reason why as a form of a preemptive strike. I only talk about the divorce when someone else brings it up, which Christy wants to do all the time. I am not abandoning my daughter. I am just lowering contact with her until the divorce is finalized because she's not letting up on trying to pressure me into taking her mother back and refuses to go to therapy that I will pay for. Also to the comments asking why my wife cheated it's a little offensive, I don't know how that changes anything, or that I should care. However the guy that she cheated on me with was younger, looked like he couldn't be any older than 30. So take that information and do what you will. Edit update, mods refused to approve a separate update post so here's the conclusion. I just wanted to say that I was very grateful to all your kind words and support in how to deal with my daughter. I decided to follow some of your advice and have a scheduled sit down with her to explain that what goes on between her mother and I is not her fault and that I simply can't ever go back to a woman who deceived me in such a big way. I told her that I try to be as forgiving and empathetic as possible but I will not ever tolerate people who liar with malicious and selfish intent and try to cut them out of my personal life as much as possible. I was very calm when I said this and tried to be as loving as I could to my child but it didn't work. Christy ended up breaking down and again tried to get Mai to convince me not to divorce her mother and just forgive her. I refused and in the end went NC with Christy for a little bit. I only spoke to her again two days before my other daughter's, Jane, 20F, birthday through a text asking her to not bring up the divorce since this was going to be the first time my wife and I would be in each other's presence since I filed. I sent the same text to her mother, and I didn't hear anything from either or them. On Jane's birthday things were a little tense and awkward but I thought it was going good. Until my wife decided to be passive aggressive with a speech about how good it is to have family together during important events. 
everyone saw through her crap and my son, Jack, 23M, called her out on it and said that she was selfish to bring this up on Jane's birthday. Christy started defending her mother and Jane, understandably upset, revealed that the only reason Christy was on their mother's side for reconciliation was because she didn't want the fact that she not only knew about the affair but helped her mother cover it up. There was a big fight that wasn't going to get resolved right then and there. I ended up leaving and was even more heartbroken all over again. Not only did my wife betray me but my own daughter too. I knew she was closer to her mother than me and I was okay with that but this. I don't know what I did to make my eldest daughter so disloyal to me, but I am now resolved to go full NC with her until after the divorce and possibly for the rest of my life. Comment 1. NTA. The wife cheated and, with it, brought an end to the relationship. As she had family money, it was convenient for her to have a prenup, but, now that the family money isn't there she wants to salvage the relationship. Maybe I'm being unfair, but if that money was there she wouldn't be trying to stay together. Why do I think like this? Because of the selfish behavior, after only thinking of herself and having an affair, she now wants to reconcile by again only thinking of herself and using her children, again not thinking of the repercussions and how it might affect the children and their father. Comment 2. NTA. I understand your daughter is upset but she definitely is TA in this situation, as is your soon-to-be ex, of course. Christy is not a child. At the very least, She's old enough to be able to understand that you aren't destroying the family the mother she's put on an undeserved pedestal, did by cheating on you and betraying your vows. She's also old enough to understand that infidelity is an automatic deal-breaker for many people, including her own father. Finally, she's old enough to take accountability for her feelings and seek help when she needs it. Unless you've been neglectful, abusive, etc., you've presumably already done everything that you owed to the family as a father-slash-husband. It's completely out of order for Christy to suggest that you should stuff your own feelings just so that you can pretend to be a happy family, with your wife for her sake. You aren't doing anything wrong, but perhaps one way to help her get past this is by continuing to reach out on the condition that your view on divorce is final, and you don't want to discuss it further with her. Finally, as a lawyer, I hate to say it but it's kind of satisfying to see a prenup work out this way. People on Reddit always oversimplify things as it's just to protect the one with money, when the truth is that they protect both parties when drafted appropriately. Your ex's apologies and pleas for counseling are an act. She just doesn't want to give up her house, but honestly? That's her own fault. Good luck to you. Now for the next story. Am I the idiot for giving advice that resulted in my friend divorcing his wife? Last in October, a guy showed up at my friend's house claiming he was the father of friend's 8-year-old and that he got friend's wife pregnant in an affair, but ran off and broke contact. Hell broke loose on the guy first but seeing how the wife was acting suspicious, he confronted her where she admitted to the cheating but claimed the child was my friend's. Friend got a paternity test done and found out he is not the father. He was hurt and depressed. He left his house and stayed at a room away to think about the situation. His wife reached out to all our common friends and they all asked him to forgive the wife and move on. Friend was feeling complicated. His thoughts kept revolving around the 8-year-old. The divorce law in my area says that infidelity is grounds for divorce but it is the father's responsibility to make sure his kids are secure financially. But if the father can prove that the wife committed paternity fraud, he gets out easy. Any lawyer could take this case and win. Due to his conflicting feelings, he had a massive breakdown. The wife and child also showed up to his place and caused a scene, asking for forgiveness and for daddy to come back. I usually stayed and listened to what he was feeling and saying, not giving any of my input till after the last time wife and child showed up, he said he wanted to know what to do. I tried to avoid adding my answer in any way and said there are no right answers and that he should do what makes him happy and mentally healthy. He kept on pressing me for a more direct answer and well, seeing how desperate he was for an answer, I told him that I would leave my wife in such a case without regret, she can manage her child on her own. I would do that because I know how cold I can get. Friend is my polar opposite, he literally does not hurt a fly. But this was just a hypothetical scenario and that the one experiencing this case in real life should look for his answer, not my hypothetical response. This happened in April this year. Mid-July, my friend finally divorced his wife and she moved out. 
He made a Facebook post thanking me for giving him advice that made him resolve to leave fake happiness for his own selfish happiness. The ex-wife called me a monster for destroying their happiness. Most of our friends and my wife are livid because they said I broke up their marriage. Wife is angry because my advice caused him to abandon his, not his, his child. That the child has lost the person they knew as their father. I am pretty sure I was clear about what I said and that it was not advice, but if he followed that part, then I am not blaming him for what he did. Friends and wife still think I am the, ah, uh, because there could have been better ways to handle the situation. Comment 1 and he is willing to hurt a fly using passive-aggressive behavior in a nuclear way. I agree. The wife is to blame for ruining the relationship, but the friend is the ah uh, for claiming the fate of his marriage rested on OP and TA, and OP better get his wife up to speed on people owning their own mistakes if he wants any peace at home. I could understand her not wanting friend over anymore if that's causing the livid. Comment 2. Guessing she is probably not a treat to be around either. No guessing needed. When she brought the kid over to emotionally blackmail him with when his daddy coming home she lost any benefit of the doubt about her true colors. Cheating is wrong, but happens. She may really have believed her spouse was the father even if she had to know there was possibility of being wrong, but using your kid to solve your marital issues is always wrong. And when the kid is the marital issue, it's just plain cold. He is young, but if some dude is knocking on their door saying he's the father, the paternity tests confirm, and dad is moving out, it's time she tells the kid in kid-friendly terms what is going on before before bio dad does or the kid hears it from other kids. You know at least one of those friends has a kid about that age that has overheard more conversations than they should.